Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Deep True Crime. I'm Manny Rodriguez. In today's episode, I want to talk about the Utah family of eight. Husband killed seven members of his family because the wife was looking to get a divorce. She asked for a divorce. Two weeks later, he did the unthinkable. Let's go ahead and dive into what we know at this time. You had this family of eight. This Utah man fatally shoots his five children, his mother-in-law and his wife, and then unalived himself two weeks after the woman had filed for divorce. That's according to public records and law enforcement. Police also revealed during a news conference that officers investigated the 42-year-old man and his family a couple of years prior this is these type of things we don't really have all the answers to and so we're sharing what we know so we don't know why they were investigated previously but this would be suggesting that a that possible earlier problems inside the home could have led up to some of this Enoch police chief Jackson Ames did not elaborate on all of this on what could have happened couple of years prior investigators they were aware of the divorce pet petition but they didn't know if it was the motivation behind this incident mayor jeffrey chestnut shared like hey we know about the divorce the investigators know about the divorce but we don't know if that's exactly what led to this the killings it literally rocked the small town of enoch in southern Utah are about halfway between Salt Lake City and Las Vegas. It's one of the fastest growing community, growing areas of the country and communities of new homes on big lots that are made up primarily of large families that belong, like most in Utah, to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is known widely as the Mormon Church. Many residents work and do business in nearby Cedar City, a city of about 35,000 that serves as a commercial hub for Enoch, for Enoch, which doesn't have its own downtown. The deceased were members of the faith and well known in town. When they talk about the wife, she literally, when she became your friend right away, she literally became your best friend right away. She treated everyone like they were her best friend. She would bake, she would cook. She was one of the most self-serving people you could come across. A great leader in the church, a great mom to her family. And this man said he believes he's not gonna live without his children and his wife. And so he does the unthinkable. And truth is, in Utah, a lot of families are Mormons out there. And so it is no surprise that the deceased were members of the faith. And, you know, as I said, they are well known in the area. Many residents served in church alongside members of the family or even went to school with the children. That's what city officials shared. Mayor Chestnut said, this is a tremendous blow to many families who have kept many nights with these individuals who are now gone. And city manager Rob Dotson said, people are feeling lost. They're feeling pain and they have a lot of questions. Community members, they gathered together a couple of nights ago to mourn and sing hymns in a private vigil at a church up the street from the home where the victims were found the previous day on Wednesday. This is one of the first mass family incidents that was done in in 2023 this happened on january 4th of this year officials said that they believe michael height killed his family killed his wife 40 year old tasha height his mother-in-law and the couple's five children each appeared to have gunshot wounds the three girls and two boys, they ranged in ages from four to 17 and even included seven-year-old twins. That's what authorities would share. 
Tasha Heights mother, 78 year old Gail Earl, she also was part of this. That was, we don't know why, but she was said to have been staying with the family to help during this difficult time. Who would have thought that it would be the last time? Court records show that Tasha Height had filed for divorce on December 21st, 2022. Her lawyer said just two days ago that Height had been served with the papers on December 27th. The reasons for the divorce were unknown in part because Utah law keeps details of divorce proceedings sealed from the public. Tasha and other members of the family were seen in the night were seen the night before the killings at a church group for young women. That's what Mayor Chestnut had shared. And so police, they were dispatched to the family's home Wednesday afternoon for a welfare check after someone reported that she had missed an appointment earlier in the week. Family, mass killings, this has become a disturbingly common tragedy across the country. In 2022, there were 17 of them. That's according to database compiled by USA Today. And so the Associated Press and Northern Northeastern University, along with USA Today, had did a study. And they shared that 10 were murder suicides and 14 were shootings. The database defines a mass killing as four or more people that were slain not including the assailant. In this particular case, outside of the assailant, seven people were done this way. James Park, who represented Tasha Height in the divorce case, said she had not expressed any fear that her husband would physically hurt her. Park declined to elaborate elaborate citing the investigation into this incident. He said he met with Tasha Height only twice, mostly recently on Tuesday, and she was an incredibly nice lady. Now, the White House said in a statement that President Joe Biden and the First Lady Jill Biden were mourning with the Enoch community. It called for further steps to reduce gun violence, now the leading cause of death for children in the US. That is quite alarming. The home where the victims were found was decorated with Christmas lights and located in a neighborhood of newly built single family homes on a ridge overlooking Enoch. It has a view of houses with snow covered roofs and mountains in the distance. Half the surrounding block was cordoned off by police tape. The Cedar City area historically agricultural is being transformed by new divisions cattle and sheep line the highway at the edge of town along with signs that advertise custom new homes and recreation in southern utah's famous national parks sharon huntsman of cedar city came to the neighborhood with a bouquet of white flowers thursday morning and she said that this incident has deeply rattled Iron County and cried as she propped up the bouquet in the snow at a makeshift memorial where neighbors left stuffed animals and flowers. It's just one big community. That's what the neighbor said. We all have one heavenly father. Archives from a local newspaper it captured moments in Michael Height's life, beginning with a picture of him laughing as a baby and an announcement marking his first birthday. He was in the Boy Scouts and went on a church mission in Brazil. In 2003, Height married Tasha Earl at a church temple. She was from Overton, Nevada, about two hours south of Cedar City, where he grew up as an adult Height worked as an insurance agent. So he was known as an insurance agent in Cedar City. Tosh Height's Facebook page showed pictures of the family looking happy in picturesque settings of Utah and in front of a large statue of Jesus. And Jenny Earl, who is Tosh's sister-in-law and a member of the Utah State Board of Education, 
She posted a photo on Facebook of Tasha and her children and wrote about the stiff competition to be their favorite aunt. I pray that Christ's love will mend our broken hearts and fill us with forgiveness and peace. That's what she wrote. She declined to comment when she was reached by media outlets. Community members who gathered at Enoch City Hall to listen to Thursday's news conference said it was wrenching to have to tell their own children that their peers may not be at school the next day. We told them that night, said City Councilman Richard Jensen, a father of eight. We gathered them around for a family prayer type of thing. We told them, a family in town, everyone had been killed and when they show up to school tomorrow, it's possible kids will be missing. Heart-wrenching in so many ways. It's incidents like this that we will never understand why it occurs. And then we find out that the Utah fat father, he took guns from the home before killing the seven. And what relatives say left the family vulnerable to what he did, not giving them a way to protect their children. In the days leading up to this horrific incident of the seven members of a Southern Utah family, the gunman, the husband and father of the family, he removed guns from the house. That's what a relative had shared. Michael Height, he had removed guns from the home that were owned by himself and his wife, Tasha Height, prior to the shootings. Tasha Height told her extended family that her husband took the guns from the family's home this week. So this was very recent. She said she did not know how Tasha Height had felt about him removing those guns, but said it left the family vulnerable, noting that both her sister and her mother, Gail Earl, were trained in gun safety and personal protection. While Earl says it is unknown whether having those guns in the home would have changed the outcome, she says if either Tasha Height or Gail Earl had a chance to defend their family, they would have been able to use those guns. They would have been, they would have because they had the skills to do it. That's what the family members had shared. Now, the families of both parents issued prepared statements yesterday, January 6th. The family of Tasha Height, whose maiden name is Earl, talked about the removal of the guns and cautioned members of the public and the media from using the family story for any political agenda. They share protective arms were purposely removed from the home prior to the incident because all adults were properly trained to protect human life. This is the type of loss that will continue to occur in families, communities, and this nation when protective arms are no longer accessible. It is our desire that the media turn their attention to the weightier matters surrounding this event. That's what these statements signed by the Boyd and Gail Earl family. In place of political advocacy, we would encourage reporting that the value of all human life, the great works of God that can render a forgiving heart, how religion can heal and enlarge our capacity for love and a return to foundational principles of peace within our nation. The reality is this tragedy serves as a call to the memory of God, religion, freedom, peace, and family and the efforts that are required to maintain those freedoms. Enoch family, Enoch city manager Rob Dotson, he said that law enforcement was not involved in the removal of the weapon, saying police never had a reason and has never had to remove firearms. The family of Michael Height on Friday said they are absolutely devastated and completely heartbroken by the tragic loss of Height, his wife, his mother-in-law, and the Height's five children. We express our most sincere and heartfelt condolences to the entire Earl family, along with the many families, friends, and neighbors whose lives have been impacted by these eight incredible human beings. Michael Height, 
42 years old. He is believed to have shot and killed Tasha Height, his wife. Height's mother-in-law, 78-year-old Gail Earl, and Height's children, three daughters, ages 17, 12, and 7, and two sons, ages 7 and 4. The seven-year-olds, the boy and the girl, were twins. And he did this inside their Enoch home take before he even took his own life. And all eight bodies were found in their home Wednesday at 4923 North Albert Drive. And it's incidents like this that we'll never understand. Because again, police were asked by concerned family and friends to conduct a welfare check. You see, when she, the wife, missed an appointment, they people were asking like, hey, we want a welfare check. When Michael didn't show up for work, people were asking, we want a welfare check. And then when they got to his home, that's when they found all of this. And so after the welfare check, it was later revealed that a massacre occurred shortly after Tasha filed for divorce from her husband. And it's things like this that absolutely make this mind blowing. You see, they're a Mormon family, five children shot dead inside their rural Utah home by the family patriarch on Tuesday. Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. The first of the year that a mass family shooting had done had been revealed and so to find out that this was shortly after she filed for divorce is sickening why i understand we don't want to live without our family the people that we love but my gosh if i can't live without them no one i don't understand why anybody could do this but again this is not about me so I love how some commenters let me know, like, we don't need your opinion. You're right. You don't need my opinion. We can discuss that at the end of it or not at all. But city leaders in this small Utah town, they were choking up. They were in tears. They could not believe what happened as they expressed their shock after this murder. Sui, that, car that was carried out by a fellow church member that left eight people dead in this close-knit community. And those shocking family mass killings are an all too common tragedy across the country. From what we are finding out, this is happening nearly every three and a half weeks for the last two decades on average. Wow, Enoch, Utah is one of more than 30 communities that have been sent reeling by a family mass incident in the last two years. And so this list includes communities of wealth and poverty and spares no race or class. A family mass incident where four or more people were killed, not including the perpetrator, happened each of the last two years in places as large as Houston or as small as Casa Grande, Arizona. The circumstances of the killings of Mirard at an argument over pandemic stimulus checks leaves four family members shot dead and two injured in Indianapolis. Financial issues lead to authorities finding six children and their parents inside a house set ablaze in Oklahoma. An escalating custody battle in Ohio precedes a man and members of his family shooting the mother of his children and seven of her family members. A father loses his job piles his wife and kids in the family station wagon and plunges into the Detroit River. Motives can remain speculative in family killings in which assailants take their own lives, but police often cite financial or relationship issues as the cause. And so in this particular case in Enoch, police are still investigating what led to the deaths, right? But authorities did say that she filed a divorce petition recently against her husband, the 42-year-old insurance agent who is believed to have done this. Officials, they not released any information on the weapon they believe killed 
the the adults and children and you know this is so heartbreaking of course but this news it doesn't only affect the family it left mothers fathers teachers churchgoers all asking questions that many communities face in the aftermath of these type of incidents how could this happen here right especially in a small town you don't expect these things to happen right we all know that it happens until it hits home where we it doesn't hurt so anytime these mass incidents happen it immediately captures the attention of people in the community people in the national news people in nationally all across the country and truth is we just wish it doesn't happen i'm here to report unfortunately it does happen folks we don't want it to happen but it happens and so this has become more of a common type of mass incidents these type of family mass incidents they make up about 45 percent of the 415 mass incidents since 2006 that's according to the database this is where i shared that usa today did this you know they all did it together actually it was it was usa today the associated press and northeastern university they're the ones that did this study and so in their database this is happening 45 percent of the 415 mass incidents since 2006. that is a high number they happen twice as frequently as mass shootings in which members of the public are killed that is unheard of you're supposed to love your family not hurt your family most but not all of them do involve handguns only about a third involve households with a previous occurrence of domestic violence and most of the assailants have no violent history or criminal past that's what people are sharing in uh, outside of this data there is no governmental agency tracking these type of things nationally so a few years ago policy analysts at the violence policy center a non-profit profit educational organization that conducts research and public education on violence in the u.s they began tracking these details from news accounts to produce an annual report the latest version from 2020 looked at murder suicides, including many mass killings during the first six months of 2019. The study found 81% of murder suicides happened at home and 65% involved intimate partners. The study also found that among murder suicides, where more than three people aside from the assailant were killed, six of the 10 during those six months were incidents in which a person killed their children, partner, and themselves. These are some of the things we would never, ever imagine, ever. And so, truth is, we don't really need all the statistics. We just want it to stop, literally. Of course, the family of all of them are absolutely devastated. Now, they hope to find some peace and some healing after what happened at 4923 North Albert Drive. You know, and it's incidents like this we just wish never happened. But I'm reporting on this because it does happen. And that's why I say step up, speak out to end child abuse. This is worse than anything could have ever been thought of. My friends, my goal, this is not about me. This is about you being aware of what could go wrong in this crazy world we live in. This is about being a voice for the victims. At the end of the day, we wish this never happened. This is one of the most heart-wrenching stories I could even report on. You could possibly even be listening to. Because five children a mother-in-law, a wife. Did he not love them enough to let them live? 
I don't know. I don't have answers. I don't know what was in his head. I don't know what mental health problem he might have had. By all accounts, everything seemed okay. And then she files for divorce, and he's not going to be living without them. But he wasn't going to live without them. He would have still had his children. He would have still had time to recover. And now it's in God, God's hands. My friends, if you are a person of prayer, please pray for these five children, this mother and the mother-in-law. Take it from this world way too soon. My friends, I'm Manny Rodriguez. This has been another episode of Deep True Crime. If this is the type of content you like to follow, hit that subscribe button. Click on the like if you got some value out of this. At the end of the day, justice for the families. We'll see you around. Peace. Have a great day.